Kelsey be chair, along with Mr. Pete Freeman, Mr. Tony Marabella, Davin support a seat at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge with staff and support. Please introduce yourself. My name is Quincy McKellen. The staff here. All right. Our remote location is East Feliciana Parish Gym with staff and support at East Feliciana. Please introduce yourself. Boy, Sam, East Feliciana Parish Prison. All right. We're ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself. State your name and DOC number for the record. My name is Quincy McKellen, 385608. All right, Quincy, you heard the introduction. We'll have a parole interview. Ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. Do you understand the process? Sir. All right. Uh, get to it. Quincy, and we do have a, a guest uh, that will speak at the appropriate time, uh, Quinithia Diggs. Quincy McKinley, DOC number 385608. You are a third class offender for a lowest building date 7 1 2023. Good time date 5 4 2024. Full term date 11 15 2032. You have a 12 year sentence, six months. Um, possession with intent distribute schedule 2 CDS. Possession with intent to schedule, uh, possession with intent to distribute heroin. Possession of a firearm or carrying concealed weapon by a person convicted of certain felonies. Does that sound correct? Sir. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Okay, would you answer Mr. Marabella's questions, please? Good morning, Mr. McKinley. My name is Tony Marabella. Can you hear me? Sir, good morning, Mr. Marabella. Mr. McKinley, uh, how old are you, sir? 45. And how long have you been in jail this time on these charges? Since 2019. Okay, was that three years? Sir, how long have you been in jail all your life? I mean, you've been convicted at least three times. So tell me how long you've spent in prison. Probably about 15 years. Tell me a little bit about your education. How far did you go in school? I went to I went to the 10th grade in high school. When I was on my first incarceration, I, I was eligible to apply for getting my body and trade and uh, a painting trade when I was in a ball's correction facility. Okay. And did you get that? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, have you ever worked on the outside? What kind of work have you done on the outside? Yes, sir. I, worked, I did also work. I worked on the oil field. That's what I'm working at right now. What kind of work were you doing in the oil field? Rigging. Rigging. How much Rigging. were you make? I was paid, getting paid, right now I'm getting paid $14 an hour. So why were you dealing drugs? It was a bad decision on my part, Mr. Murphy. Well, it's been a bad decision all your life. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, how, many, how many years were you dealing drugs? Just recently, it was just an opportunity that I had came up and I just made a mistake. What do you think recently? Reese, Reese you started out in 1996. Uh, you've got a, a long history of, of drugs. Were you a drug user as well? No, well, sir. You've never used drugs? No, well, sir. You just sell them? No, well, sir. Every one of these drug convictions that you have involve dealing drugs and not your using drugs. Is that right? Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, McKinley, I see you have 10 children. How old are your children? Is that right? Yes, sir. How old are your children? I have a 27 year old, a 26 year old, a 21 year old. I have a 17 year old. I have a 13 year old. I have a 10 year old. And I have two eight year olds. Let me ask you a question. What would you do to someone? that gave one of your children drugs and it either killed them or ruined their lives. What would you do to that person? I would have to ask myself to forgive them because if everybody makes mistakes. And I would try to be out there I'm for the I'm just moment. asking you a quick question. So you're telling me if someone dealt drugs to one of your children, you would just ask for forgiveness? You wouldn't get mad at that person? You wouldn't want to harm that person because of what they did to your child? 
Not because of the simple fact that this is my child responsibility to know better. You know, ah. so you don't want me to go out there and teach my child to know right from wrong and to know better about what his decisions are. But what about the people you sell drugs to? It's their fault that they're stupid to buy them? Is that what you're telling me? No, sir. So what harm do you think you caused over these years distributing not just marijuana, but cocaine and heroin? A great amount. I read in your uh, application, you said, I have been rehabilitating my way of thinking. Yes, now, tell me what, what has changed from the time you came to prison three years ago to now? that I know that I have to change my people, places, and things, that I have to live for my kids, to better my kids, because of the way that this generation is going now. Just like you said, I don't want my kids to make the same mistakes that I've made. Well, I mean, you're 45 years old. You had to come to prison to learn that? You didn't know that before? No, sir. I had to come to prison to open my eyes and know that, that I can't make it through all life doing the things that I'm doing. And you've been in prison at least 12 years before you came this time. Yes, you didn't take programs or any courses while you were in prison the last time? Yes, sir, I did. I stayed out there from 2010 to 2019. I worked and everything else. I just made a bad decision before I came to jail. Uh, what makes you think that I should believe that you won't make that bad decision again? Because I feel like I didn't spend enough time on my life in prison to know better than to put myself around better people. That Your better record work. doesn't show that to me. My question to you is, why should I believe that? You're telling me, oh, that's what I'm going to do. Give me some specifics that I can hold my hang my hat on provoke for you. I, yeah. I see a horrible record. I see a man who's, who's, who's in prison because he had at least six buyouts sellouts to uh, confidential informants. You were smoking marijuana and with your, I assume one of your children when you were uh, selling some of those drugs. Is all that, those police reports all wrong? Yes, sir. They dropped those charges. I'm sorry? Yes, sir. They dropped those charges. They dropped those charges. I don't, I understand that my record may show one thing, Mr. Marabella, but I'm here to tell you that I have to learn. I know that I cannot Keep continue to keep coming back to prison, trying to be something that I'm not. My, my question is very simple. There is a police report with surveillance that suggests you were smoking a marijuana blunt, selling drugs with a young child. Was that one of your kids? Yes, sir, but that's not correct. That was a police report that was got threw out behind somebody that lied. Uh, my question to you is, you told me you didn't smoke drugs. I don't there smoke. are surveillance that show you were smoking a marijuana blunt with a young mm -hmm. child present. You're saying that's not true? I'm saying that that's not that wasn't the, the case at the time. What do you that, mean that, at the time? At the I'm time. not suggesting legalities. I don't care if it was thrown out because of something or not. My question to you is, were you smoking a marijuana blunt in front of one of your children or a child at the time you were selling drugs, yes or no? No, sir. So that's false. To my, to my, to my knowledge. To your knowledge, that's false. Okay. Mr. Uh, McKinley, uh, our records indicate that you have high needs. You are you have high needs for substance abuse, and you say you don't do drugs, but our records suggest that you uh, have a serious drug issue. Uh, you also have high needs for antisocial thinking, which means to me means you need a lot more work. Now you've done a few programs. You've taken cage of rage. Uh, uh, you've done victim work, and you've taken nurturing parents. What other programs have you taken? that has made this big change in you? When I was in DCI, I was in the Living in Balance class, so. Okay. So you took Living in Balance as well? When did you take that? I took that from July 14th to whenever I got shipped to the work release.
So what can you tell us, uh, Deputy, what can you tell us about Mr. McKinley? Well, he, since he's been at my facility, um, he came here in October of last year, October 3rd. He don't have any disciplinary infractions, uh, no issues with staff. He's currently working for Gulf Island offshore, and he works part-time for Jet Enterprise when he's not offshore. Just haven't had any issues with him at all. Thank you. All right, we're here from uh, Ms. Diggs, Ms. Cronista Diggs, Patricia. Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead and make a statement on a brief statement. Okay, well, as my dad stated, he spent 15 years in prison. And I definitely think that I definitely think that he deserves one more chance. He has kids out here. Um, you know, when we talk to him now, it's a different dad. Like, you know, we're calling him for, you know, we're waiting on his call and getting advice from him because he's giving good advice. You know, he has a place waiting on him. He has a job. He has grandkids he hasn't met yet. He has grandkids on the way. I definitely think that with the strong support of family and him not being friends with who he was friends with before, I definitely think that he would do better this time. And I, I can guarantee you, I believe that he would do better this time. All right, thank you so much for your comment. Thank you. All right, Mr. McKinley, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Mm -hmm. Sir. Go ahead. Um, I understand that I've made some mistakes and I understand that Mr. McGovern, you were right to the point that it took a, it took for me to become a man to, to admit to this board right now today that I have to change my people, places, and things. I have to change the people, places, and things to the point where I have to support myself with my family, with people who have my best interest at heart, and continue working for the things that I want. I don't want to make the same mistake by not being the father to my kids. So anything will happen to them so that I can teach them better and so they can learn from my experiences. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Pam, prepare to vote. Mr. Maribella. Uh, Mr. McKinley, uh, I, I, I hope you are changing. Uh, you have a, a very beautiful, wonderful young daughter who is testifying on your behalf today. Uh, sounds like you've got some good family support. Uh, but, you know, you're a drug dealer, and you've been, been peddling poison to, to people for a long time. We've got five or six. Uh, you can shake your head. You can do what you don't. I've read all of the reports. I've seen all of the surveillance. Uh, and uh, you were dealing drugs. And... You had served 12 years in prison before that. You've only been in jail for in prison for three years now, and all of a sudden you rehabilitated. I, I don't buy that yet. I think you're on your way. I hope you're on your way. You need to turn that corner. Uh, you know, when you said, well, you know, if somebody sold my children drugs, well, that's their choice. And I think that's what you believe. You've been peddling poison to people for a long time, and you believe, well, it's their fault if they're stupid enough to buy it from you. You have to understand what you are doing and why you're doing it and what's going to make you quit. And until you do that, I'm not prepared to release you. My vote today is to deny you. Good luck to you. Mr. Freeman, uh, I concur with Mr. Maribel. I vote to deny all right, you have two votes to deny your parole. Also, I'm going to vote to deny your parole today for the same reasons as stated. Uh, I'll continue to work hard. I think you're, you're right there close. Three votes to deny. Today, your parole has been denied. Good luck to you. It's 839. We'll adjourn it. East Feliciana. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Okay. Man, with these three judges, hearings are going to go by fast. If you had Ms. Jackson, and Mr. O'Shea, or Ms. Wise leading that, it would have been a 30, 40 minute hearing. So I think we're, things are going to really zip along. Um, man, yeah, his, his daughter was really um, impressive. She Actually, when she came on and spoke, I was like, okay, set him free. But um, Ms. Mirabella took me back down to earth. It was a bad interview. You know, he's been peddling poison for all this time. And he 
kind of was like confrontational and, and wasn't just didn't really have the right answers for a parole hearing. Um, and uh, he lied to them, which they know, but it's really funny hearing them say it. Sir, were you smoking a marijuana blunt? <laughs> it's like, you can't get more. I'm sorry, but I guess boomer. <laughs> but with the Cajun accent, you're smoking a marijuana blunt in front of the children. Um, I guess they'll say, you know, they they just wanted to serve more time. They, they're going to say three years is not long enough on a sentence and with this track record. Um, it's just crazy how quickly that hearing went. Um, what can I say? With that, I'll let you go.